Hello everyone and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we are installing Windows 7 through Parallels. Alright, so before we begin, you want to make sure you have a copy of Windows 7, either 64-bit or 32-bit, professional, any version as long as you have Windows 7. You want to have it with you. And it could be in an ISO file, it could be on a DVD or on a flash disk. It doesn't matter, this Parallels will let you use DVD, ISO, and a bootable drive to install Windows. So we're going to select this feature here, install Windows or another operating system from a DVD or image file. So we're going to click on this, and this is the automatic locator for all of your operating systems if, if you have an operating system on your computer. I had my flash drive plugged in just momentarily, and I unplugged it. So it still reads that Windows 7 was on that thumb drive, which I did have, but I cannot use this because my thumb drive is no longer connected to the computer, so it's really not going to work. But since I have my DVD, which is right here, my Windows 7 DVD, I can select that. If nothing shows up here, you get this little spinning wheel. You can locate manually if you know where your operating system is. So if you click on locate manually, you can select from either a DVD. If I have an ISO file, I can click here, or a USB drive that says Windows 7. For some reason here, it's detecting that my USB drive is connected with Windows 7, but there's nothing connected, or you'd see it here. So we're going to be using a DVD, using the locate automatically feature. So we click Windows 7, and we click continue. The next step of the process is to put in your product key. You don't have to. I usually cut the middleman out and wait till I install my operating system. And this version requires a product key. I'm going to check that. That way I don't have to put in my product key. And Express Installation, I'm going to uncheck that too. What it does is make the installation process longer. Now you might say, but if I check it, it's going to be faster. I like unchecking it because it's more of a natural Windows installation. You pick your computer's name. You select whether you want to install the updates, all that stuff. And I'll show you what that is once we continue. So uncheck Express Installation. You can check that if you like, if you've used that in the past. But I'm going to uncheck it because... I, I want to put in everything. I want to name my computer and everything. All right, so we click continue. Now, here are several features, and you pick one depending on what you're going to be using the computer for. If you're going to be software developing or developing software, you want to click this one. If you're going to be software testing or designing or using computer-aided design software, productivity or games. I'm going to click games because that's what I'm going to be using this computer for mainly, and you click continue. Don't worry, you can always adjust those settings and I'll show you how. Here you can name your computer, and if you have other users on the computer that, that you want them to access this Parallels image, you can click here, share with other users of this Mac, and it'll share with everyone. But I'm not, I don't have any other users on this computer, this is actually my sister's computer, which is why you see her name here. And here's going to tell you free disk space and the virtual machine will take this much space. You want to make sure you actually have enough storage to keep this. If your hard drive is at 120 gigs or 128 gigs like most laptops, I wouldn't try because it's just going to eat up so much storage. Okay, so down here it says create alias on Mac desktop. I never click on that because I don't really know what it does and you know what they say, if you don't know what it does, don't touch it. Next one, I like checking this one, customize settings before installation. This lets you customize and tweak settings before you install Windows. And this is where I like to adjust certain settings. And let me move this window out of the way so I can show you. Here it's giving me two cores of computing power, 4 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. That would seem right about right, like correct as to what I want. But since my computer is a quad-core computer, I can go to hardware. CPU and memory and select one core, two core, three cores, or four cores. Four gigs of memory ideally is what you want since my computer has eight gigs of memory. I use four. But if your computer has 16 gigs, you can use eight. If your computer has 32, you can use 16. And you can also click on advanced settings, but I don't go into the advanced stuff because most of this stuff is very general. I don't touch anything here either. For graphics, I like to put one gig of graphics so 1024 one gig of graphics memory mouse and keyboard I don't mess with this not because I don't know what it does but because uh, since I picked games it's gonna optimize everything for games I'm not gonna be printing so I deselect printers 
my network, it's going to connect through the computer's network. Sound, I don't touch this either. I don't share my Mac camera with Windows because I don't use any camera software in Windows since it's mostly just used for gaming, but you can check that if you are going to use it. This is how I'm setting up my settings for playing games. So hard disks, 128 gigs, here you can click on edit, and you should see this little window here, and you can also select numerical values here or use the slider to select how many gigs you want. I'm going to put 512 gigs of storage, and it's not really going to eat up 512. It's going to give it virtual 512 gigs. Depending on what you load on it, that's how big the image file gets that it's on your computer. So now we click apply and it's going to create or going to tell you it's highly recommended to make a backup, but there's really nothing to back up because we're just getting started. So we click continue. You might get an error message saying that it couldn't be formatted. Don't worry about that. It's because there's nothing on there to format, but I didn't get the error message here. But if you do just click OK and click close and you should see that it says here the numerical value that you inserted. Floppy disk, I don't know anybody who still uses those CDs. I'll keep that there because I am using my CD drive to install Windows 7. I also go here to full screen, use OS X full screen and activate screen corners, and I turn this off. It helps because I go up here in the taskbar. It keeps it from showing up, but I'm going to unclick it for now because I need to show you how to install Parallels tools in case it doesn't install for you. Use all displays in full screen, and I like to keep this in automatic. And let's see what else. Sharing, home folder only. I'm not going to share cloud folders with Windows. I'm not going to map Mac volumes to that. So once we're done here, here you can also rename the computer, by the way, and change your configuration. And of course, because it's games only modified, since I did make some modifications, you can also install certain things from here. So here in security, you can require a password to do certain things, isolate Windows. I'm not going to do that because there's certain features that I like. Backup, you can back up your machine or restrict editing our business features, all that stuff. I'm not going to go cover that. But here, once you close that window, you should be able to double check or you can double check your features. So quad core CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, 512. I'd like to go higher on the RAM, but it says that it's recommended to keep it at 4. It, and it's pretty fast using just this configuration here, but you can tune it for whatever you're going to be using. If you're going to be using it for spreadsheets and Word, two cores is just fine. So we click continue and it starts Windows and it starts making your, it starts booting off of the disk. So you should see that little Windows. There we go. Windows is loading files. I'm going to let Windows load its files and I'll be back. All right, so we're past that Windows is loading files screen. And you did get to see that starting Windows with the little Windows flag. And here is what we see. It does look kind of weird. I've done this on a computer and it does look like Windows 7 instead of Windows 95. But it'll work just fine. And do keep in mind that if you're using an image file, it's, the loading process is going to be quicker. Because I am using a DVD and the DVD drive that I have is not the fastest. It's not going to install as quickly, but it should work for you. All right, so I got ahead of myself there, but... Here we see this install now. What to know before installing Windows and repair your computer. Don't worry about any of this. We're going to click install now. Like I said, please do keep in mind that if you're using a DVD, it's going to be much slower. And now we have the Microsoft software license terms. Windows 7 Professional, this license, these license terms are an agreement between you and the computer manufacturer that distributes the software with the computer or the software installer that distributes the software with the computer. You can read it if you want. I've read it in the past. If you do agree to what this says, you can click on I accept the licensing terms. Click next. And now we have two options. If you don't know what to pick, you can help me decide. But upgrade, what it does is keep all of your stuff, all your files, and installs Windows 7. So if you're doing this on a computer that's not this one or through Parallels and you're installing Windows 7 on a computer that ran Windows XP, it's going to remove Windows XP, put Windows 7, but all your files will remain there. But because we're not upgrading, we click on Custom. It's a more advanced feature, but once you master it, it's going to be basic. This erases everything and shows you your hard drive. Here's a hard drive we made. And we're going to go to Drive Options. We're going to create a new partition. The maximum partition for this is 524 gigabytes. And don't think that I'm pulling 24 gigabytes out of thin air. It actually does that max partition in order to 
keep your hard drive space at 511 gigs with 100 megs going to a system reserve. <clears throat> you can delete the system reserve, I do not recommend it, but you can format this partition here in case you already have something on it. Let's say you're doing this on another computer and you're at this screen here. If you want to format that hard drive and install Windows 7 brand new fresh, this is where you click and you format or you can delete it, delete everything and create a new partition and a new system reserve. But we already have this formatted, we already have it ready to go, so we click next. This is the longest step of the process. It starts copying Windows files and expanding Windows files, installs features, installs the basic updates, completes the installation. Because I am on a DVD, this is going to take the longest. It is going to take long. This process does take long, and it will your computer will restart a couple of times. So please be patient with it. Again, please do go out there, go for a walk, go for grocery shopping, take a shower, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're back, and we get this little window here. It says Windows 7 Professional, so depending on the version you are installing, if you're doing Ultimate, it's going to say Ultimate right here. If you're using Home Premium, it's going to say Home Premium. But anyway, it's all the same, and you have to type in a username. So I'm going to type in iMac, because I'm using this on an iMac. And yes, the resolution is kind of terrible, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. And here you type in a password in the next screen, and this can be a password of your choosing. It doesn't have to be a password. You don't have to. It's recommended, but you don't have to. I'm not going to. Okay, so here now, we're going to put in our product key. Automatically activate Windows when I'm online. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want you guys taking my product key and stealing my, my uh, copy of Windows Home. So, nope. No product key. Here we have three different options. Ask me later. Install important updates only or use recommended settings. I would go for use recommended settings because it installs all the important updates and the recommended updates based on the software you have. So if you install Microsoft Office, this is how you're going to get your updates. So we're going to click on recommended. Pacific Standard Time because that's what the time zone I'm in. If your computer is connected to a network, it should select that automatically. But if you're not connected to any network, you may have to select it from this list. Now we click next and you have to choose the kind of network you're on. If you're doing this at a Starbucks coffee shop, you may want to click public network. And don't worry, when you get home and you connect your computer to the network, it should ask you again what kind of network you're trying to connect to, and then you can choose home network. Since I'm at home, and I'm, this is a big computer and I'm going to be taking it anywhere, I click home network. If you're at work, or the network you're going to be using it on is at work, you click work. So we're clicking home because that's where I'm at. Depending on where you're at, you're going to have to choose either public, work, or home network. And it just starts connecting to the network and applying settings. Oh yeah, and I also have to mention, if you're wired up directly to the internet, it this is the window you get. But if you're on Wi-Fi, it should ask you to connect to a Wi-Fi network or connect to a wi wireless access point. And then, then you click on your wireless access point that you want to connect to, put in your password, click connect, and it should connect, and you should get that window. The one where it says which type of network you're trying to connect to. Now it's preparing my desktop. This doesn't really take long. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute. And we boot into Windows 7, and we see our desktop. But again, the resolution isn't all that great. Don't worry, I'll fix it. And no, you can't just right-click screen resolution and fix it that way, because... 1920 by 1200 isn't really the best. We're, what we're going to do is go up to our taskbar by clicking Command and Option, and that releases our Mac OS cursor. Then we can come up here, go to Actions, and install Parallels Tools. Another way to do this is by going down here, again, Control Option to release Mac OS's um, cursor, and go down here. And here you can see Windows 7. You right click it, and then you go to, I think it's Actions, yes, Actions, and Install Parallels Tools. And then we click Continue. Now we click back inside Windows 7. If we don't get the autoplay window, you can always go to the computer. Click here, click Computer, Parallels Tools. Click on that, click Yes and it's installing Parallels Tools. Please keep in mind that installing Parallels Tools does require a restart, so 
I'll try to get the updates out of the way. Wait for the installation of Parallels Tools. What this does is install drivers that are compatible with Windows and Mac. Well, not really Windows and Mac, but it installs drivers on here that work with Parallels. So once it's done, you have two minutes to restart. It restarts automatically in two minutes. So if you don't do anything for two minutes, it restarts. Or you can force it to restart by just clicking the restart. There we go. We booted into Windows 7. I'm going to show you how to install updates. So just click on your Windows button, Control Panel, System and Security, and Windows Update. The only way to keep your computer from getting viruses is to keep your computer up to date. It's very recommended that you do because most of this stuff here will be fixing it for and also install all these optional updates because most of these optional ones are for drivers on your computer like the AMD driver. For some reason I'm getting an AMD driver and I have an Intel processor but it should still work. And that's it for this tutorial on how to install Windows 7 through parallels. Thank you very much for watching and see you all in the next tutorial.